The next talk is accelerated alternating direction method of multipliers. And the speaker is Mazier Sanjabi from University of Minnesota. So hello everyone, my name is Mazir Sanjabi. I'm here on behalf of my colleagues, Mushtaba Konstantina Norindam from University of Minnesota. The topic that I will talk about is accelerated uh, alternating direction method of multipliers. Uh, so without any wasting of time, let's start. Uh, so the outline, uh, I will talk first about the acceleration by extrapolation, which is a very important idea in optimization literature. And then I will talk about uh, how we can extend this idea to ADMM and uh, get an accelerated ADMM, which we call it A2DM2. And, uh, okay, uh, it skips. I will try to uh, talk about how we can apply it to some of the problems that arise in machine learning. Uh, so why acceleration is important? The main reason is that, uh, uh, at, at least in the, uh, uh, in the literature or in the history, the main reason was that the gradient methods that are used uh, often, they're simple, but they're slow and they are not order optimal, meaning that they are order one over k. So uh, one way to go about make, making them faster is to use Newton methods, which are second order methods, but they're difficult to implement because you have to have the information about Hessian, you have to invert the Hessian in each step, and uh, this is costly and also numerically unstable when the Hessian is uh, ill-posed, so all condition. Uh, one way to go about it is, uh, uh, the idea is that how can we make the first order methods or gradient methods faster without adding too much complexity to the problem. So the extrapolation comes in here. So, ah, uh, come on. Nope. Skips. So it's, oh, now we are four. Uh, so Nestorf's, Nestorf's idea for extrapolation is one of the most successful ideas in this area. So what he does is that in each step of a gradient method, instead of doing a pure gradient update, you first extrapolate the point to the next point, which is extrapolated point, uh, the point Y here, and then you compute the gradient at this point and then update based on this gradient, instead of updating based on the original point. Uh, so by using some, uh, uh, some uh, specific, uh, specific step size rule, which is uh, given by him, you can, you can show that you will converge with order of one over k squared in the case of the smooth unconstrained problems. This is one of the, one of the most uh, influential ideas in, uh, in uh, accelerating methods. So now, uh, how does it work with the ADMM, which is, which is totally different with the first order methods? So first I have to talk about the ADMM. Oh, come on. Sorry about that, we're skipping one of the slides. It's going to six instead of five. Is there any fix for this? Oh. Okay, <laughs> so what is ADMM? Alternating direction method of multipliers is designed to solve this kind of problem. Basically, it's trying to minimize if a, a, an objective which is decoupled uh, based on two variables, but the variables are coupled with a linear constraint which is given here. So these kinds of problems are tricky to solve in practice, uh, but ADMM can solve these kinds of problems. How can it solve it? It tries to form an augmented Lagrangian function, which is uh, uh, by introducing a Lagrangian variable for this kind of constraint and an augmenting term at the end. So after introducing this, it does a Gauss-Seidel type of update. So it takes two of the variables, update the other one, and it goes through and through. So in the most important update in the ADMM is this part of the update, which is the dual update. So if, if you look at the dual update, it's very simple. It looks at the previous X and Y, and it tries to somehow uh, reduce the effect of, uh, pen penalize, you by, uh, uh, penalize you by looking at the, how much you violate the constraint, which is this constraint here. Okay, so let's see how it's related to the first order methods. So if you look at the dual problem of the original problem that we're trying to solve, the dual problem is maximizing over lambda of the dual function. The dual function is itself is a minimization over x and y of a, uh, of a penalized version of the function. 
So uh, if, uh, if you take a look at this uh, dual function, the, the subgradient or gradient of this function with respect to lambda, if you know the optimizer of x and y with, uh, with the specific lambda, it'll, it will be of this form, which is very similar to this, uh, to what we had, uh, to what we had here. So, but instead of the x star and y star, which are the true optimizers, we have replaced them with, with some x k and y k, which are coming from the augmented Lagrangian <laughs> function. So it's not exactly the same, but it's similar. So we can think of the, uh, okay, so we can think of the uh, uh, ADMM as an inexact dual ascent. So how can we accelerate it? We can do the extrapolation in the dual, dual update. So, so uh, the, way, the way we do it is that we have the usual uh, ADMM updates. We extrapolate the, op the original update that we had for the uh, dual variable. And because of, some in because of the inexactness that we had, we have to do another update on the Y here to make the, uh, make the algorithm converge. This is the only part that is a hiccup from the original uh, implementation or original idea of Nestroff. So let's see uh, uh, if this, I this idea has been around for a while. Uh, this idea, uh, there was a paper uh, by Goldfarb and et al. They talked about uh, uh, the convergence of this guy with respect with O of one over K squared. The only problem was that they had this A and B equal to identity. They needed this matrices to be identity. And also they had some complicated skipping scheme to make sure that it converges. And also they had to do symmetric ADM, which means that update the, uh, the um, primal variables twice. There was also this paper by Goldstein and uh, his colleagues uh, proving the convergence of over, over, over 1k squared, but uh, they had this uh, problem that f1 and f2, they had to be strongly convex and f2 had to be quadratic. In our case, we proved that it will converge uh, with f1 and f2 being strongly convex without uh, f2 being quadratic. So we don't need any quadratic condition in f2, which uh, relaxes us a little bit to apply it to other problem. So, uh, as I uh, promised, so we have a proof for convergence and all one, k, one over k is squared, which is the optimal order for these kinds of problems. We prove that it will converges under some mild, con mild conditions on the step sizes. It will converges to uh, the true uh, uh, solution. Okay, any questions so far? Uh, so now, now the question is that how can, how can we apply this kind of method in a, a machine learning uh, problem? And our idea was to somehow uh, do a proof of concept to show that it can be applied really easily in, in a problem. So we, we picked up a problem which is ranking on top of the list. Uh, what the problem is that you have two sets of, uh, two sets of for example, uh, labeled, uh, labeled, labeled objects. And one of the labels is better than the other one. For example, you have, uh, uh, you have uh, sets of two sets of documents, one irrelevant to the topic and one is irrelevant to a topic. Definitely relevant is better than irrelevant. And you want to generalize this kind of relevant, irrelevant to sort the ones that are relevant uh, so that the most relevant ones come up. So basically you're looking for uh, the ones that are coming up. So in this kind of sorting uh, or uh, sorting these objects, what is important is the order at the top of the list because obviously nobody looks at the second or third page of Google, page, Google search. Everybody is gonna look at the first few of them. So between these two kinds of ranking, this one is more superior because it has the positive or relevant ones coming on top. Okay, so uh, so this is a uh, this is like the the, the kind of uh, uh, I would say uh, the notations that uh, probably I will not go through it very much. But we have two sets of samples, as I said. One of them is positive, one of them is negative or irrelevant. The goal is to find a function, a scoring function that that puts the positive samples higher than the negative ones, and we assume that this function is linear. So, uh, so uh, the way to the, the, the way to formulate this problem is that to look at look at the positive samples that are coming, uh, that are. that are coming uh, on top of the, the highest negative sample and try to maximize those. So we look at the positive samples and we try to maximize the positive samples that are coming on top of the highest negative sample. 
This is a formulation that is given by uh, Lee and et al. in this paper in, I think, NIPS of 2014. Uh, so uh, obviously you have this loss function. We cannot track this loss function because of this indicator function. We relax it to a, a, a surrogate function L. In their case, they chose this surrogate function, which is a, uh, um, uh, which is a, um, a quadratic function, which is a truncated quadratic function. We'll try to stick with this. So you can see we have a, uh, in this formulation, there is a loss function, there is a regularizer to control the complexity, but you don't see any constraints, or linear constraints. You don't see any decoupled uh, objectives. So you'll say, okay, how can we apply ADMM here? And the answer is that you have to massage the problem a little bit. You cannot apply ADMM just by looking at this problem in this way. So uh, I will not go to in, uh, too much of the details. Uh, so what you can do is that, uh, uh, but uh, by introducing some new variables such as a and B, you can rewrite this problem in a whole new way that uh, you will have some linear sets of uh, uh, constraints and you will have a decoupled objective. So now you have, you have a, a perfect set of, uh, perfect set to apply ADMM. So the next step would be to uh, just, um, okay, just try to apply ADMM. So you have to have uh, some more uh, formalisms. We, we define x minus and x plus to set to, to gather all the uh, plus samples and minus samples. You, we put them into the matrix, and you can rewrite all the uh, constraints into this form, which is the typical form of ADMM. And uh, then the next step would be to apply ADMM. But in order to apply our A to DM2 algorithm, which is the accelerated version, we have to have a strong convex objective. So in order to make it a strongly convex, we add a few terms here. Uh, in, our, in my experience, or in our experience, adding these terms doesn't affect the, the actual, behavior, actual performance, of the, uh, performance of this final solution that you'll get, but it will help you drive a better algorithm or better solutions in faster time. The only thing that's important is that you have to pre-compute a matrix here, uh, which is the matrix, uh, the, Hessian, the, the inverse of the Hessian of the quadratic part of the objective. So if you have this matrix pre-computed, then you can write down the updates of ADMM pretty easily. So this is, this is a little bit scary, but the updates are just a straightforward derivation of what ADMM should do. Basically, it updates the first set of uh, primal variables, the second set of primal variables, and then the dual update. So if you, can, as you, if, you, if you take a look at these updates, you can see that the update of S and B, they, they decompose all, over all the all, all different components. So there is a chance, and, and also the dual variables, and there is a chance to uh, somehow make this uh, mm, parallel. I will not, we, we didn't do anything like that in our simulations or in our experiments, but there is a, there is a potential for that. Uh, so now the question is that how much complexity we have in each iteration? The, the most uh, computation intensive uh, part of the algorithm is doing this multiplication, which is the multiplication of the matrix H with this vector, which is of order M plus N times D. And as we proved, uh, the, or the, 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 complex the complexity of the ac accelerated ADML algorithm is one over K squared. So if you want to get an epsilon accuracy uh, solution, you will only have to uh, do this many uh, iterations or this many uh, uh, computations, so which compared to ADMM is a, it is an improvement, and we'll see in the experiments as well. So, what is the state of the art algorithm in this case? The state of the art is the top push, which basically applies the accelerated gradient on the dual of this problem. So, in their case, they have a, they they apply almost the same algorithm. The only difference is that because they are applying an accelerated gradient on dual, they have to do some projection, which needs to be efficient. So. They, they have an efficient implementation of this uh, specific for this problem. And they get the same order of complexity. So now let's see uh, how, uh, how we, are, uh, uh, we are running compared to those. So there is, a numerical, uh, there's, there's a numerical experiment setting. We use a data set which are binary classification data sets. They're all, they all available online. We ran uh, 10 trials of, uh, uh, of each algorithm. We average over them. Uh, we, we keep two thirds of the data as training, one third as testing, and uh, we fix the accuracy as 10 minus four, and also we, we, we choose all the parameters by cross-fold validation, three, three-fold cross-validation. And the metric that we use is the positive at the top, which, in, which is the number of all the positives that are coming at, on the top of uh, all, all the negatives. 
So let's see, let's take a look at this, uh, this results. You can see that our A to DM2 algorithm is, uh, is almost comparable with the top push in terms, of the t in terms of the performance, which is the positive at the top and also the time. In, in, in some cases, it, it can outperform the top push and, uh, and also uh, the, in terms of the, uh, the, the performance, it's almost the same. You can see in, in all of these results, uh, our A to DM2 algorithm is much better than ADMM. In some of the cases that the ADMM doesn't exist is because it takes too long, so we couldn't include it into the, uh, into the, the simulations results. So let's take a look at a little bit more of the uh, simulations. As I said, the performance is almost the same as a, uh, top push, although we didn't do any trick. We, we just took it off the shelf, which is a, ADM, a to DM2, which is a general algorithm. We just applied it to this problem. Uh, uh, the, it outperforms ADMM for the same problem and there is no sig significant uh, performance drop due to the added terms. If you look at these two, uh, two th the red one is the ADMM and the, the yeah, I think the, yeah, the, the black one is the A2 DM2. As you can see, there is a little difference in, the, in terms of the objective, but in terms of the positive at the top, there is no difference. Uh, you can see that the, the, the ADMM variance, they usually converge very fast compared to the uh, top push. Uh, And in terms of the residuals, you can see that the A2DM2, uh, 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 th it will uh, beat the ADMM in terms of the residuals. And if you look at the ROC curves, you can see that on, on the top of the list, they are almost the same. All the algorithms, they have almost the same performance. Uh, so uh, one more slide to summarize uh, what we did. We talk, I talked about the extrapolation for acceleration and how, how, to, how to generalize this one to, for the ADMM, which is not the first order method uh, in essence. Uh, we, we talked about the theoretical convergence rate for the strongly convex case, and uh, mm, uh, we talked about an application f uh, to, to prove the concept uh, and applying it to, uh, to a real machine learning uh, algorithm, and also problem, and also there are some further directions we have to work on, which is accelerating f acceleration for inexact ADMM, which has a better, uh, computationally, it should be better than the ADMM itself. So with this. And there is this list of the papers uh, that are referenced. And come on. Okay, there was a thank you. <laughs> Questions, guys? Have we mean it? Uh, the plus minus numbers mm -hmm. on the runtime, were they uh, standard deviations? Yes, yes, they were standard deviations. Because they were, at least for some of the rows, were on the same order of magnitude as the actual means? Yes, yes, they are. They are in some cases, they are. So there is, there is a difference between the runtime of the, uh, the algorithm. The, uh, so one of the things is that it's very random with the uh, top push because you are looking at only one of the negative samples which comes at the top. So if you have, if, uh, I mean, if you don't have that one, that specific one, this problem could be very difficult to solve. And it, I mean, it could vary a lot based on which samples you choose. There is a little bit of uh, this discrepancy because of the underlying problem itself. So, so it's very random. Right yeah, it's, it's a little bit random, yeah. I thank the, the speaker.